bores. Boring. Bored. <laughs> boredom. <laughs> Not, Not boredom, man. Not boredom. No, Holy this is God. real. It's been uh, it's been the total opposite of boredom. So I don't know how long it's been since the last time we did an episode on the YXZ Turbo Project, man. Like Weeks, months at this months. point, it feels like, right? And we've just been, it's been a combination of waiting for parts, getting parts, having them not be right, small setbacks, you know, redo. Yeah. And then just all these other things that we've had going on. Like, I don't even want to explain why it's been so long because it'll just sound like I'm complaining. I don't want to do that. At so. this point, they've seen Velocity Raptor. Right. And if not, right. check out Velocity Raptor because that was a lot of uh, time. Yeah, Velocity Raptor. There. We got some new machines, you know other issues but <laughs> anyways man it's uh two weeks from race day we finally got all the parts so uh all we have to do is reassemble this entire thing and then tune it and make it run good yeah no big deal should be just should be no problem small stuff dude <laughs> so yeah man tonight's the night engine reassembly so we got rods we got pistons we got head studs obviously new bearings and gaskets all that stuff to go back in it and uh Next time, we'll get her get her back in the machine. This so. is going to be hardcore, so this sort of is reminiscent of the Wildcat engine rebuild. We have, I guess we didn't go this far, but we went pretty far with that. Yep. And we have one of my favorite additions to the garage, which is the pearlescent bubble coat for the motor. <laughs> Our friend Fonzie at <laughs> dipyourcar.com hooked us up with that. Absolutely. So Doug will be applying the pearlescent bubble coat I mean, to if, all engine components. If you're not doing that, what are you doing? <laughs> anyway. So yeah, man, just get into it. I don't know how detailed we're going to get here. I don't know what you guys want to see. If you really want to spend a bunch of time going through the details of this thing or not. But Well, let's talk about it real quick. What do we got here? We have basically a bare block. We got a bare block, totally stripped down, totally cleaned up, with the exception of the balancer shaft. Left that in there. But it's all cleaned and ready to go. So first things first, we're going to set the crank in. We got all new bearings for the bottom end. That should be a pretty easy should be a pretty easy step. So we're gonna go in, we'll measure the clearance, make sure our new crank bearings are good. And then assemble rods and pistons, drop those in. Um, because we got new rods, you know, the bearings we need are a bit of a question mark. So we got a couple sets of bearings. We'll assemble them, check bearing clearances, and just, you know, kind of step through an engine rebuild, so. So since you've stored the crankshaft like that, it's now bent. Yeah, it's been sitting um, away for a week, so it's. So people, yeah, warned us that the crankshaft is gonna bend. Uh, just flip it over. Yeah, <laughs> put some put some weight on each end of it real quick just to make sure. <laughs> we'll get her. There, oh, yep, I saw it straighten right out. We'll get her straightened out. A couple so. light bulbs, dude. Heat that thing up. I think that should. I think that should be okay. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Anyway, so yeah, man, that's it. We'll bust some bearings open, set the crank in. Are we gonna and, plastic uh, gauge that stuff? Yeah, we'll plastic gauge it, and then just uh, reassemble the thing. It's gonna be basically basic engine assembly till we get the head on we're gonna do some different stuff with the cam timing that's a little unusual but other than that man just bolting metal parts together right well oh. let's do a little garage intro and then a little uh engine build all right i'm into that side by side blog.com garage At that beautiful head porting. Custom DBF, Doug Butterfield Fabrication. Heck yeah, man. So what's up with the bearings here? I don't even know what you're talking about. Different rod bearings, all sorts of stuff. What's up? <sighs> yep, so those bearings come in different sizes. Very, very slight deviations in the size to account for uh, basically manufacturing variation when they manufacture, when they make the uh, uh, crank and the block and rods and so on. Um, so they're color coded and each color code just correlates to a specific size. Um, so for the crank, basically, we just reordered stock bearings. We didn't change the crank, we didn't change the block. The stock color code should work, assuming there's not too much wear. Stock clearances are going to be fine for this build, so. Okay, cool. Um, and there's a way you can tell that. There's color codes on the bearing, um, and then there's also numbers on the block and the crank you can, you can reference. Well, wow, all sorts of stuff. So do the stock bearings have color on them, or was that already worn off? Uh, it's worn off in most cases. Okay, yeah, so that so. is a stock 
crank bearing. Nothing too special there. It's seen a little bit of wear. Yep, I found it on a couple, but if you reference, uh, so for instance, those numbers right there. So that's one of the numbers you reference. Then there's numbers on the block. You add, you divide. There's a little formula <laughs> that you plug in by the service manual. It pops out a color. That's the bearing you order. Jesus, okay. So it's not so, just your old basic small block Chevy Speed Pro bearing kit. Yeah, yeah it's a little a little different so um, crank bearings pretty easy rod bearings potentially a little different because the rods are different okay so cool basically I got a set of bearings that match what was in there we'll start there just measure the you know measure the clearance and then adjust accordingly so one thing that was a hold back uh, and I don't know if you want to talk about this Doug or not oh yeah but, sure um, yeah when we ordered bearings something weird happened Yep, so every time I've ordered bearings in the past for an engine, when you order one rod bearing or one main bearing, it's the set. You get a full circle, a pair of bearings. It's not even a pair, that's so, one bearing. It's one, yeah, right. You don't it's cut a, a bearing in half and say you have one bearing. It's a split bearing, so <laughs> Yamaha, for you know whatever <laughs> reason, when you order one bearing, you get one half of bearing. So, I don't know, a week ago, two weeks ago, we finally had a free night. We got everything out, we opened up all the stuff to put this thing together and then realized we had half as many bearings as we needed. So so next time you guys order tape and it only comes with half of a roll of tape, cut right down the middle, you'll know who to blame. Yeah, Yamaha. I mean, I can't really blame anybody but myself, but... Still though. It's that, a pretty odd thing, so... Yeah, because you wouldn't replace just half. Right. Anyway. We got all the bearings now, so we'll set the bearings in the block and then set the crank in her cleaning everything up good as we go we got our uh, warm water our dawn dish soap for a lesson bubble coat little rinse bucket we'll just uh clean stuff up and in a matter of probably 25 minutes <laughs> wow video time this will be good crank bearings being set in not very exciting but just part of the process so mm -hmm. is there a little notch form that i see in the block there yeah, there is a little notch right there Line that sucker up. I like to set that end in and then just push the other side in. Yeah, makes sense. So is it time for the pearlescent bubble coat? It is, On man. the crankshaft here? It is. Here we go. So this is warm water, a little bit of Dawn dish soap. Leaves a nice uh, bubbly sparkle on everything. You just can't beat Dawn dish soap and some warm water. Isn't this what they use to clean off ducks, like from the Exxon Valdez and stuff? Yeah, that's basically why I use it, man. Save the ducks. Yeah. I'm trying to support Don. I do like ducks. We're not really hunters here at the blog. No, I have pet ducks. Yeah. For a while. I'm a fan. Having said that, dip it and then uh, put her in the clean water when you're done. You Simple. got it, man. Done. We'll hit it with some compressed air. I mean, none of this stuff was really super dirty to begin with. It just had some oil on it, so. All right. We don't go crazy here, but. But then your little pieces of debris will come off. Water sort of works its way in some of the nooks and crannies that a rag might miss. So, just makes sense. Clean crank, man. This is it, brother. Wow. Yeah. It's a big moment. So you don't want to oil right here because you're going to use plastic gauge on everything. And if you got oil, the plastic gauge doesn't really work out. So. Exactly. So we'll be pulling it back apart to put assembly lubricant on it. So. Yeah, and don't start spinning this thing either like you're trying to give your best impression of a little Yamaha three-cylinder. Right. Just relax at this point. <laughs> yeah. And all these things really aren't that difficult. It's just the little things that matter the most. Cleaning it, making sure you know what you're doing in the small areas. The big stuff. Like, it's not that hard. No, it's just more patience than anything. You know? Yeah. You're just taking your time. So, hopefully. Oh, yeah, buddy. Hopefully, I have enough of this left. Probably should have checked that. Yeah, they sell it at AutoZone if not. So, this is uh, really interesting. I think we went over this before at some point. Man, maybe not. Oh, you gotta be kidding. Oh, yikes. <laughs> That's, Do you know how long it takes to go through an entire stick of plastic gauge? Yeah, you use it about two millimeters at a time. <laughs> Why would I have this in the toolbox? Because you want to have the reference <sighs> measuring. Are you sure it didn't just fall out? I'm this stuff looking. is real thin. I'm looking. I bet you it just fell out. I don't know, man. I don't think it did. You gotta be freaking kidding me. We can just go buy some. <laughs> Uh, that is the face of a broken man right there. <laughs> Just thought we had everything. 
Waited so long. Unbelievable. There's no real option right now. No, go get some. <laughs> you can't if you have nice own. micrometers, OD and ID micrometers, you can just measure things and do the math. But reaching in with what I have to measure these insides, doesn't, it's not really going to work. So <sighs> We'll go buy some plastic gauge. <laughs> Where's the plastic gauge? We're back with the plastic gauge. It's oh, there it here. is. <laughs> nice. buy two because neither one of us had cash. I didn't have any money. And there was a $5 buy-in at the auto parts store so we got two so when this one opens up and it's not in there anymore just like what happened over here uh we'll have this one so <laughs> yeah. we're good uh so we just dipped the uh bottom half of the block nice man so that's ready yeah so this is tipped upside down all right maybe it was obvious to some people uh but yeah so this is the bottom like this is where your oil pan bolts to the bottom of this yep so this is gonna go like that like that after we uh, dry it off yep so we just did it in a little bit of soap did it in a little bit of water and it's time to blow it off here so doug will show you the ins and outs of plastic gauge right here though this is a big one pretty simple just a little uh little piece of plastic and a very precise diameter I'm just going to break a little piece off set it on each crank uh, journal right where the bearing is we'll put the other half of the block on tighten it down you know with the bearings in it obviously and then uh, when we pull it back apart, there'll be a little smash piece of plastic in there. And the width of the smash piece of plastic is going to correlate to this little gauge that's printed on the paper. And then that'll tell you what your clearances is. Clearances are. <laughs> tell you what your clearances is. <laughs> oh, but anyway, yeah, so this is actually really cool. I didn't really know what this was until like I built my first small block a number of years back at this point. But like understanding what it's doing is really interesting pretty simple little tool yeah and it works really well yeah like so people use this so how so there's no gasket right on the bottom of this one so basically you're just putting an rtv here yep this will just be an rtv joint so we're just so, gonna go sans rtv yeah because that's pretty much gonna squish completely Yep. so if you come over here and take a look setting it on is an art in itself so you want to do it um, basically perpendicular to the path of travel so you get the most yep. clamping area and you don't even really need a piece that large but you know we got plenty of plastic gauge now so why skimp right looks good man so we'll do all the journals and then clamp that bottom half of the block on putting bearings in I got like this Jurassic Park. Everything that goes on in my head goes on in the Jurassic Park theme. <laughs> it's song. just a Jurassic Park like wow. yeah. brain theme. <laughs> like if your brain had like a Windows theme, it would be Jurassic Park. Yeah, I mean it's not bad. Yep, so we're putting in the bearings in the bottom part of the bulk now and got all the plastic gauge in. Boom, 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 boom. It's almost time, Doug. This has been so many years coming. Like when did you buy the, the YXZ? Was it 2015? No. No, 2016. 16, yeah. I think it'd be 16. Because you bought it in the model year it came out. Yep. Remember that? Yep, yep, yep. So still basically three years coming. I mean it's been a while and I wanted to turbo it the entire time. So well, this is uh this is exciting. Install the block lower it half. Is time. Yep, so we got all the bearings in. Dry. And we're just going to carefully just set her in place. The block looks really good. Looks like you cleaned it up with some sort of something. Yep. What did you use on it? Yeah, so I uh, did a simple green and a scrub with just a brass bristle, brass bristle brush. <laughs> brush, brush, brush. To start. And then uh, use some uh, aluminum spray clean, like what you oh, use nice. on wheels or something. You know, a chemical cleaner, sprayed it on there, hosed it off. You pretty much magnifluxed it, that's what you're trying to say. Did a nice job. So these are all the bolts. Boom. How exciting. There's the bolts. Oops. Not that one. Get a little sunny. Basically tighten until it feels like it's loosening and then just call it a day. This is why I'm standing over here not touching it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so Dougal's going to tighten these down to what? We're going we're gonna to torque them. So uh, these are 12 foot pounds and then plus 90 degrees. Okay. But we're just going to get close. Okay. All right. So they were torqued. Now well, they're coming out. And we're going to see the old plastic gauge. I'm excited about this right now. Mm -hmm. And we'll just uh, hope they haven't moved. So we'll just carefully lift and 
You never know which side it's going to be on. Looks like they all stuck to the crank. Oh no. So we got a couple over here. So we got some here. Yep. We got some squish there. Yeah, we got some on both sides, so. Not a bad thing. I haven't actually looked up what Yamaha spec is for these yet, but let's just go ahead and see what they are. So we'll look at the inches side. You're basically just going to compare the width. So it looks like we are between one and a half thou and, and, and two thousand. So that's a tight tolerance, man. That should be totally fine. Yeah. Yep. And it looks like we're pretty consistent on each between one and a half and two. So we'll pull up the spec and. Yeah, then on here you can see a little bit of the green. See left what behind. it is. But the majority of the. Oh, no, there's some on there. Yeah. Yep. A little bit there too. Hmm, and that's to be expected because like we said before, it's the same crank and the same block with the same bearings. Yeah, so it should all be good on the tolerance side. Yep. So reference our manual here and figure it out. Alright, so here's the spec. Journal oil clearance. Those are your main bearings. That's what we're looking at right there. So we're talking in inches, so they're looking at uh, it's basically 1.1 thousandths to 1.8 thousandths. And we're right in the middle of that, a little bit towards the upper end, which not a bad thing for a boosted like. motor. Yep. We're going to be making some power. We're going to be running a little thicker oil in it. So good to go there. We'll clean the garbage off of these and then uh, move on to the rods. Yeah, man. The pizza slices are out. Corillo, baby. I think we <laughs> probably tiny little rods. I think we probably looked at these before, but... We've seen them, but you know what? It's okay to see a nice set of rods again. Yep. Never gets old, man. Doug likes a hard rod. Connecting rod. I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh, that's unfriendly sounding. Wow. Uh, you anything outside right now that we should worry about? or mm, Are we good? I don't think so. So, just got to worry about this motor. That's a good point. We're going to clean the rods up. Um, we're going to set them in there and uh, torque them up without the pistons on them at first just to check the clearances because that's easier. Make sure we got the right bearings. And then we'll pull them apart, assemble the pistons to them, and actually put stuff together to stay. Yes. <laughs> look at this show up. Look at look at his vape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I yeah. thought you were gonna cut your hair after the JP. Yeah, I decided I'm just gonna grow out there. Ah, it looks great. How are you? Pretty good, man. Good. Glad to see you. <laughs> Diet Coke, because Leo drinks all the Coke. Got, you guys seen these things yet, dude? Natter days? Natter days? It turns out they're for the boys, according to the internet. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> so, Nick, we got some things for you, but it's going to be another video, so you can't look okay, that's officially right now. That's I know. Tough break, dude. Tough break. Right. Hey, Douglas. How you doing, friend? See you, dude. We got some things going on over here that you're going to like. Is that Mike Reed? Uh, that is Mike Reed. Hello, Mike Reed. Hi. Look wow. at this. Wagsy motor. This is so clean, though. Yeah. We dipped it in the Dip Your Car Pearlescent Bubble Coat down there. Check it out. Fonzie hooked us up. Yeah, me and the Fonz dude, we go back. Straight shooter. It's a good boy. This is cool. Yep, so we got all sorts of stuff. Doug's got some uh, pizza slices for us. Uh, we're like, going to eat that. Mean? Those are Carrillo Pizza. Uh, CP, Carrillo Pizza. It's like tortillas. I'm just not even going to touch anything, dude. It's like tortillas. Did you hear that? Dude, Whoa. it's pretty aggressive out there today. Doug's got the freaking CP Carrillos, dude, going yep. in here hard. Putting a little plastic gauge on there. We got a little tape on the end of the rod so we don't bang things up too much. And we're just going to do a little test fit here. My plastic gauge fell off already. so don't. That's why you cut some more. Don't breathe too much when you're doing this. Yeah, Boy, always hold your out. breath, which Leo, means don't breathing. talk. Sorry, the camera farted. Like a little... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll explain. So I got tape on the end of this thing so we don't ding up stuff while we're in there, eh? And uh, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna get the old uh, deal in there and make sure my plastic gauge didn't fall. Okay, put the cap on. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's about how you talk, I think, right? I don't really know. Unbelievable. Oh. Gonna take the rod bearing bolts that got a bunch of grease on them. Did you like my Throw them in here. <laughs> Your outro was. Oh, at the pooper? 
<laughs> that was scripted, by the way, for all the people. I have washed my hands more than anyone you've ever met. You savages! You think I just freaking don't wash I my hands after something. I poop? That was something scripted. Was weird about that. Locus. That was Nick's idea. Why don't you just film me coming out of the bathroom like I just got done pooping? I and he was gonna wash his hands, but there was a guy there in there. There was a guy. Okay, there. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt weird as the guy looked at us. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we're right. You're looking for that, Doug? Uh, so I'm looking for that socket. Right there, bud. Where is it? Aha. So yeah, we're referring to the uh, outro to the Silver Lake video we just made. If you guys don't pay attention to that, you guys don't follow like we said in the outro. <laughs> 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 Ideally, you'd follow. So Nick brought over these uh, new beers. <coughs> They're not really new. They're probably a few months old. But They're a few months old. Natter days, man. It's made by Natural Light. It's kind of like their summer beer. It's uh. Strawberry and lemonade. Pretty it's just good. like a classic shanty that they just changed the name to Saturday. But it's better than like a Lining Kugel's summer shandy, in my opinion. So yeah, we can't find a classic 10 millimeter 12 point. We're um, <laughs> trying to find one that works. I know Doug's got one that does work, but we can't run it with the current the, deal. The adapter in the wrong direction. So we'll keep digging until we find the socket. One will work. Okay, geez, unbelievable. So, Doug came in here, torqued this. <laughs> we'll just get in a minute. Just let him laugh it out. Anyway, yeah, so uh, Doug came in here, torqued this. What was the torque spec? Torqued this down, I went to uh, 20 foot pounds okay. for, for this one. And then now we're going to remove the cap and do the same thing that we did in the crank to check the bearing clearance. Yep, so, so this will be a little tricky because there are dowel pins oh, interesting. in there. So. All right, so we got the cap cracked back off. I ended up just tapping it with a little piece of brass. Smart, dude. So we'll see if we got a good read or not. That looks like a tight tolerance, bud. Yep. That'll work, man. So get this out of here for a second. We'll see what she says. What does it look like? Let's take a look. Yeah, I agree. It's pretty... Uh, it's pretty wide, so I don't think it's too wide, though. Not a bad thing. It looks like we're right at one and a half thou. Oh, okay. So that's that about one. as much as the crank. So, yeah, that's really not uh, really not so, bad. It's a little yeah. tighter, but big end on the rod. Depending on what the old service manual says, we can that's probably get that just, figured that's out. That's probably just fine. All right. It's time here, brother. So, got pistons out. We There's have not seen these boys. yet. Yeah, so that's a nine and a half to one JE. G turbo piston, so good units, full low compression. Now I think you wanted to go a little bit higher yeah. compression prior, correct or not? I was originally going to do a ten and a half to one motor. Um, you know that was real peppy and be like two hundred and forty horse on pump gas, and you know that's a nice like all around setup. And then uh, ten and a half to one pistons weren't on the shelf; they had to be custom made. It was going to be some extra weeks. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that. At the end, this thing doesn't really need to be a good all-around setup. At the end, it needs to be you know, fast as more hell. Monster, yeah. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the nine and a half to one. <laughs> We're gonna put it together, run it a couple times, and then instantly probably put a bigger turbo. On. So. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, anyway, anyways, though, we got some new rings, so we're just gonna check the gap on them. Yes, this is pretty important. So. As you increase cylinder pressure and cylinder temperatures and all sorts of good stuff, these rings will expand. And when that happens, uh, if they touch, you will have catastrophic piston failure, aka chipping a ring land. Have a bad time. So you definitely just, don't want to uh, do that. Stick the ring in there, square it up with the piston. We'll grab our feeler gauges, see where they're at. Oh yeah, there's the gap right there. So sometimes you hear people talking about gapping things for boost. Basically, that just means increasing the gap in your uh, piston ring here to allow it to expand more. Yeah, especially important, you know, like on your top ring that's seeing more heat. Yeah. Um, you know, like rule of thumb, general rule of thumb is like four thousandths gap per inch of bore. This is a three-ish inch bore, so I'm going to look for, you know, twelve thousandths minimum, a little extra. Not a bad thing. Probably not going to hurt you, especially mm -hmm. if you're going to push this thing to that 400 horsepower range. Exactly. So we'll find uh, the 12 er see if that fits. So what do you think it's at right now? I couldn't really tell. It looks pretty tight, man. Like, I feel like we might want to open them up. Eh, okay. 12 fits fine. Okay, that's good. Now, are you talking about boosted applications, or are you talking about NA? That's more of a general NA, so, you know, you could go to 
probably five or six thou. So this one is about it's about fourteen. Fourteen yeah, it looks tight. fits just a little bit snug in there. Okay. So I'm okay with that. Good. Glad to hear it. Mm -hmm. Horrible. So, everything was so fucking jacked. And no bathrooms. Ugh. Need to have bathrooms. Having said that, Doug is about to take a shit on the competition right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, man. So we got the uh, the end gaps worked out. So you're going with your 14 thou? Yeah, yep, going 14 thou. I think that's going to work fine. Just going to do the old ring assembly. So what do you got? So this is the oil retaining ring. So it's a three-piece ring on the bottom. It goes on first. There's a little uh, center spring deal that you put in, and then two thin rings you put on top and bottom. Each ring has a gap in it, of course. You just want to offset those a bit, 30 degrees or something. Next ring is going to be this uh, black square edge cast looking ring. Usually there's markings on them, so this one's got an N on it. That always goes to the top of the piston. You know, you can feed it on by hand if you want. I've got these little players that are ring insulation players, so we'll use these. Oh, nice. Okay, so it just stretches it out. Yep. Sort of similar to like a snap ring player. Yep. Cool. Pop her in, you know. And now Just it like is that. time for the top one, the compression ring. So same deal. Find your letter. There it is. Put that towards the top. Nice. And so at this point as well, we've already measured the... Uh, clearance and all the rod bearings so those are all good yep all about the same yep 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 and uh, I'm gonna assemble the rest of these pistons and then are you gonna put them on the rods and drop them in yep then we'll put them on the rods we'll flip the well actually we'll do it like this so the rod and the piston will drop in from the top and then we'll flip it all over set the crank in start wow. uh, bolting things together you know getting hella serious getting cool Come on, that's okay. Good timing for the eater to come on. So yeah, okay, so we got the rings yeah. assembled on all the pistons. and Things uh, are getting serious. Yep, we clean this stuff up, so I put one of the circlips on the pistons because it's easier to do, and now we're gonna go ahead and assemble it to the rod. So you gotta pay a little bit of attention here because the rods I wanna put in the same way I had them in before when I measured the bearings. And then uh, you gotta also pay attention to the way the piston goes in because the relief cuts are different for the intake side versus the exhaust yeah, side. Yeah, so the intake should be the bigger side, right? Yep, okay, that's that the makes intake sense. side. So it's gonna go together like this. Boom. Drop your wrist pin in. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's it, man. Sliding fit, put your other circle up in. When we go to assemble this, we'll get some oil in here. But, wow. Uh, yeah. That's great. That's a beefy looking setup. It's a just very nice looking setup. Compare the assembly. Oh wow, like, look at that. Yeah. I mean like a peanut for scale like last time, but even <laughs> everything's longer. The, the, the skirt is wider. Yep. Looks like the dish is heavier than on the stock, which makes sense, lower compression. Yep, got little thicker ring lands on this piston. So. And then the rods too. The rods are just so much bigger. Designed with boost in mind. Got a little uh, piston ring compressor, eh? All right, man, yeah, the worst one in history. So. That thing is not sweet. It pretty much looks like something you use to hold your ducks together. Yeah, I had a little nicer one and broke it. So this is what it's come to. But, you know, these pretty small pistons, pretty lightweight rings. Like, you can even put them in by hand if you need to. Which we may end up doing, but we'll try this piece of junk. So number one goes in first. Yep, so these are all cleaned up. I put a little tape on there, you know, just so it's not banging around. Loosen this thing up. And so, how did you how do you know what side is intake and exhaust? Um, look at the head, basically. Okay. You know, that's the thing. So, if you're used to the motor, you look at the block. I recognize this thing, right? I know the exhaust is over here, so you can tell that way. Or if you just look at the way the head bolts on, this is the intake. You know, the valves are bigger. Valves are usually the intake. You just gotta look at it. You know. Sometimes you just gotta look at it. Nick, do you have any advice? He's right. You look at it. That's it. Okay, makes sense. We just made fresh corn, by the way, too. Yeah, I really can't concentrate on much besides the popcorn. See the lights on. <laughs> Sorry, over there. Douglas. It's like watching a movie here. <laughs> yeah. So this pretty much uh, this is where you want to offset your ring gaps a little bit too. Just pay attention to where the ring gaps are. In all three rings, offset them so they're not lined up. Yeah, so you don't get that straight blow by right to the crankcase, you bud. You don't have to overthink it too much, but they'll rotate. But ideally, they won't rotate right into the position of badness. So we'll come over here. 
That thing just sounds not good. It's just not good. <laughs> it sounds like you dropped it in the sand. I mean, it's done a few motors and has worked in the past, but. Yeah, we'll figure this out right now. That's basically it. Try to get it squared up on there. So I know there are like better ones that are like a billet that actually fit down in here, but unless you're doing the same motor over and over and over, it just doesn't make yeah. any sense. Even, I like the, uh, there's even player styles ones. With oh, the band, yeah. Then have players. I think those are nicer, but. Uh, you know what you could use, dude? Strap wrench. Anyways. This is it. This is, down in. this is like the biggest part of the build right here. Yep. As anticlimactic as this is, this is very important, Nixus. It's like dropping the friggin' heart in the beast. Yep. Pistons going in, man, yeah. So, so do you loosen nice that up or do you tighten that no, up? I was just making sure it was nice and tight. And we're just gonna tap her in. Sounds good. Boom. That's it, man. Great, man. It worked. Wow. So, one home. Two to go, and then we'll flip it over, get ready to set the crank in. And did you hone the block? Because we missed that if you did. I did, yeah, I did that when I was cleaning it up, you know, earlier. So this is, you know, plated block, very hard. You're not really going to do much with the hone, but I did run a hone through it just to, excuse me, clean it up a little bit. Yeah. There was still lots of crosshatch in the cylinder wall. Okay. You know, in the motor, which is typical of these. So basically just clean it, reassemble. That's exciting. Like it's... Always fun to see. <laughs> yeah, the first one, man. Thing. That yeah, first there. one. Yeah. It's even labeled number one, too. That's mm -hmm. a big deal. <laughs> number one. Number one. Well, I'm excited for you, man. Do that uh, two more times. I like that. And then we'll flip that bad boy over and put them rods together, bro. I like that. Finally moving in the right direction. Oh, yeah. They're in, baby. Time to flip this bad boy. She got a little tunk here, eh? Three pistons oh, in. Oh, no, That's no it, tunk. Man. No, they sat against the side. So, heck, yeah. We'll uh, pull them up a little bit. Get the electrical tape off the ends. Get ready to set the crank in. Things are getting serious, man. Yeah, I'm getting excited now. Looks clean. Yeah, everything's cleaned up. I think uh, we gotta double check the crank, make sure all the plasti dips off it, maybe clean that thing one more time. You plasti some... dip the crank? Yeah, <laughs> plasti, plasti <laughs> gauge. <laughs> oh, my it's crank off. to be flat black, bro. <laughs> That's Fonzie uh, guy in your head, man. He got you that pearlescent. Fonzie said that's okay. You should try it. He got you the pearlescent <laughs> bubble coat. Next thing you know, you're plastic dipping entire cranks. Oh uh, yeah, there's a little bit on here. We'll get that off. Get you could off. rhino line it for strength. He said oh, he yeah, tried it on an Audi motor and it worked out. Oh, that makes sense. Getting deadly close here, though. How do you know the position of the oil pump? Or no, that's a Connor shaft answer. I assume that there's going to be markings on this. So okay. I haven't actually looked at it yet, but. We can see now, so there's a paint dot. I'd be surprised if that was really it. Because that balancer needs to actually balance something. Right. So we'll find the markings and we'll cover that in a minute. It's like a child, Doug. Are you nursing a crankshaft <laughs> right now? I am. Just rubbing its face, making sure everything's okay. It's actually checking for the dot on the crankshaft to mate up with the uh, balance shaft here. Yeah. So there's a pink paint dot right there, which makes sense. I'm just surprised that that's all it would be, is a paint dot. So I'm just looking to see if there's a little stamped dimple somewhere that I'm missing. Yeah, with that being pretty much welded to the crank, it'd have to be pretty obvious. Uh, you know what? It is a dimple. Really? Yeah, and it's just kind of covered up by the, by the paint dot. So basically, we're going to line that tooth up with that dimple. There's another one. You'll have to trust us. There's a dimple in there. Okay, oh yeah. I can see it. On one of the teeth. Okay. So we'll have to make sure that's lined up when we drop the crank in. So I might actually need a second set of hands to kind of... Nick Seuss, come wipe them dirty dick beaters off and get over here. So what did you just want me? I said I want you to clean we'll probably, your... We'll probably be alright. What I'll do is we'll lube the bearings up. I'll push the pistons down and then pull the rods back up after, so... Yeah, it turns out you're useless. Sorry. Oh, toothpaste, huh? That toothpaste, makes sense. Man. Yeah, you want to use Crest. For sure. Yeah, so toothpaste has got uh, silica in it to clean your teeth. And silica will actually wear in the bearings quicker. It helps with break-ins. So. Yeah, you want a little grit in there. Okay, man. Things are getting serious. So I'm going to drop the crank down, and I may need uh, your help just lining just line up them up the rods. I think this one on the left is going to be okay. So it shouldn't contact, but...
Um, you want to hold that center one over. There you go. There you go. Got her. I'm going to move it back towards me just a little bit. Okay, it should be good there. Uh, you're good for now. If you want to, can you move your left hand just a bit? Very close to Doug in a way that I'm not usually close to him. Hey, Doug, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good, man. This is cool, dude. I think this is our first real crank installation on the channel. I'm not sure we've done that. All right, rod caps are on, bud. Tighten up the third one right now, so you gotta yeah. make sure you uh, keep orientation the same between all of them. Doug obviously marked this on orientation. Yeah. But yeah, so there's numbers stamped on one side on both of the caps on these, so you're okay there, but then I numbered them, you know, to keep the caps with their perspective rods. Nice. We uh, cleaned the bearings up, got the plastic, got the plastic gauge off them. He <laughs> wanted to say plastic dip. Plastic dip also off them as well, though. And uh, <laughs> put some grease Bonds on them. Him. Now we'll just torque them up, man. This is exciting, dude. Mm -hmm. This is a big step in the motor here, getting these rods secured and then get the whole bottom half of the block on this bad boy. Heck yeah, dude. So we'll go uh, find our torque spec. Mm -hmm. Click them in. Heck yeah, man. It's time, brother. I was just about to ask you, you can use an extension to get to that third cylinder, and then I realized you could just turn over the motor. We'll just give her a little spin. So where do these go to? Are you going to the... Uh, We're going to 30. 30 makes sense, because yep. you don't want to exceed 32. Right. And 30 is right where you need to be. So 32 is probably where they're starting to yield a little more than you want them to. So that's it, man. 30 pounds. Yeah, this isn't a uh, little lube on the threads. This isn't the funnest thing, but it works. Pretty important to just go ahead and yeah, do this work right. These. Yeah, do it right and don't rush. Doug took nearly three months to finish his motor build. <laughs> right. So this thing should be great. It's about how long you should take to an assemble an engine. <laughs> so we got. RTV for days. Room temperature vulcanized sealant. What type is it, Doug? There it is, man. Ultra gray permatex. It's advanced. Oh, you can smell it. Nothing but, <laughs> nothing but the best. It smells so good. So, we strategically place the uh, silicone where we want it. Everything it's not actually silicone. Up. I think so. it's just RTV. Or is it silicone based? Did someone say something about silicone? <laughs> <laughs> Nick's over here. Ice cream cone? Ice cream cone? I would take an ice cream cone right now. It's like Elmer's, you know. Oh, Elmer's, that's a gross smell. Smell that, Nick. It smells so good. Does it really smell like Elmer's? I don't like that smell. Here we go. Silicone's on. Dowel Dougie pins are in. has laid down. Gasket maker for days. Dowels are in. The top hat is going on. Abe Lincoln. That looks nice. Heck yeah, man. Tap her down with the DB. Doug Butterfield dead blow. It, dude, squeeze silicone all over the place. Just let her dry. So you don't want to tighten it down first? Mm, no. We'll just let it dry with a nice uneven gap, and then tighten it down later. <laughs> I'm shaking my head right now. I get <laughs> Well, you said let her dry. I get. I don't know, uh, Doug. I, I trust I'm you sorry. blindly on this stupid. I'm shit. sorry. Unbelievable. That was my fault. That was fun to watch. Uh, <laughs> okay, August Burns Red Screamo Band, dude. Not even wearing Milano's. Who are you anymore? What happened to you? You used to be so stylish, dude. <laughs> I've never worn Milano's in my life. I've I wear that. jeans I've eaten from Milano's. Walmart, dude. That's These Walmart. are Walmart specials. Wrangler, stretchy, dude. $20, dude. So when you ruin them, you just move on. <laughs> Anyway. I can't remember the last time I wore jeans. That's unfortunate. I used to like jeans, but... Fupa got in the way? No more jeans? No, I just can't find a pair of jeans that fit nice anymore. Levi's changed their uh, style, and I changed my lifestyle. <laughs> Check out the Wrangler brand, dude. Doug seems to have good These luck. are Wranglers. Oh, wow. Wrangler Brothers. Mm -hmm. Razor and Wrangler Brothers, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you're working in the garage, and you're not in Wranglers. You're doing something wrong. Right? That's why I don't I'm work in the garage. I'm in Malabros, dude. <laughs> <laughs> is that the brushless unit is the real question? No, this is the non-brushless unit. So okay. it's got the right amount of torque for this. Yeah, we're just running these things down loosely. Got the computer booting back up so we can get the proper torque spec for this unit. So you got all the bolts holding the lower half of the block together? Yep. 
And uh, yeah, man, gonna torque these bad boys down and then maybe put an oil pan on it. Yeah, yeah, we got an oil pump to go on. Oh yeah, yeah. We got a new little drive chain to put in there because the old one was kind of messed up from all the metal in the motor. And then yeah, we'll flip it over, and go to the cylinder head. Yeah, dude. We're making progress, mm -hmm. man. Torque time, baby. Time for some torque. So if you actually look at the casting, you'll see numbers that give you the torque sequence. So right there is a number one, there's a two, there's a three, there's a four, five, six, seven, eight. So you just follow those. And that's actually, goes for all these screws. So that's all the way up to 23. Wow. Basically, just make sure you get these right after that. You ever seen like a Lamborghini intake manifold? They have it printed on there. Yeah. The firing order. This is similar. Uh, so what's the torque? So uh, it's just, it's 11 foot pounds. And then uh, on the long bolts, it's 95 to 100 degrees or 95 to 105. So you go to a torque and then you go to an angle and uh, typical torque to yield type setup. And then on the short ones, it's 11 foot pounds and I think 75 to 80 degrees. So nice, man. Just get a manual. You know, I think you can buy, ooh, I did that one already. I think you can buy uh, just manuals on a CD for real cheap. So yeah, that's what we did on eBay. Totally didn't download it. Exactly. All right, man. So we're about to set the oil pump in. We got the, uh, there's a little spacer here, a couple O rings, a couple dowel pins. Yeah, it looks like not much has happened, but a lot has actually happened here. So Doug cleaned out the oil pump pickup. So the uh, filters there were pretty mucked up from some of the stuff. A lot that, of, um, yeah, a lot of garbage in there, a lot of uh, pieces. I might actually take that one off and clean it better. I'll do that in a minute. But um, a lot of pieces of like the uh, the timing chain guide jammed in there. So we got that cleaned out. And I think we're okay. Go ahead and set this sucker on. It's pretty incredible how complicated this motor is. Like there's a lot going on with it. Yeah, there's a lot of little pieces you got to keep track of. So yeah, I mean, we'll lock this down. We'll pop this little sprocket off. You can see it's loose. There's a This is chain drive, as you can see. We got a new chain for it. We'll throw that in. And then we can cap the bottom of this motor. Yeah, man, that's a pretty exciting moment here. So Doug did torque down the rest of the bolts. I think there was, what, like 22 or something? 23, 24. 23, yeah, Jesus, holding that like bottom that. part of the block on. Yep, so. And then, like you said before, it's time to move on to that head, bro. You got it, man. Put that around your neck, bro. Our it's like a general like a direction. Chain. That's pretty, Whoa! That's actually tight, dude. <laughs> look at that. Oh, what the fuck? Of that. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a unbelievable. Like a gangster. <laughs> uh, so we got a new timing chain as well because that didn't feel good either. So that goes in behind the chain that drives the oil pump. So we actually just got to set this in first. Mm. And it can just uh, relax there. Chill out. Maybe while we, while we put this in. Eat a nice supper. So is that a new timing or a new chain for the oil pump or no? It is, yeah. Nice, dude. It is. Just going hard. The stock one, it didn't feel great. Oh yeah, because of all the goobly glock in there. Yep. So Probably because of all the debris. The debris. Put that in. Got a little sprocket. A little sprocket for the debris. Snaggler in there. Reminds me of my old bicycle days, you know? Yeah, when you were a BMXer. Just, uh, yeah. La BMX. <laughs> La Bico? <laughs> La Bunny Hopper? La Bico. <laughs> I was like La Mountaineau. La, La Mounto. Uh, La 22 inch wheel? 22 inch wheel. It was 26s back Damn. then. And then it, then it went to 29s. Hi, and then they're I'm like. La 24 speed? Then they went, actually, 27 and a half is pretty good. 27 and a half with the Kendalls? <laughs> the Ken Kendalls? The like Kendall? The Kenda, maybe? No, the Kendalls. Kendall. I, mm -hmm. I got a diamond back. I ain't too worried about it. I'm getting a really good shot of Doug's neck here. Why don't you play this hair a little bit? Eh? No. <laughs> Remember last time we did that when he was working on the YXZ? You what? gave him a Donald Trump comb over? Oh my gosh. That wasn't the YXZ, was it? Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was, was the Akrapovich, man. I don't have my comb though anymore. Do you have a comb in there? No, I'll I do don't. It. Why don't you have a comb? Because I had a story. beard at the time. <laughs> mm. Funny story, there's no comb here. Hmm. I'm going to have to make one out of a fork and some glue. <laughs> And some RC. Do you have six forks and some glue? Maybe a popcorn, dude. I think we've lost the majority of the benefit of watching Doug do that. <laughs> well, anyway, it's there now. And the guy gave away his new chain just to get this motor to run. So you're welcome, motor. I'm going to put a little Loctite on this one because it spins, you know. Smart. <clears throat> Lock that down. There's a little chain guide that pops in, I think, afterwards. It's been a while. Let's see. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Nice, dude. 
So that's that. We got a gasket for this. Pop the oil pan out. My bad. I put the I put the bottom on off video. This really isn't uh, that big of a deal. There was a gasket. There yeah, was an oil pan. Well, you can still see the gasket. There it is. Yeah. Nice gasket. OEM gasket. I was getting a bit restless. I got to be honest. Nick's over here getting his brand new wheel and tire set. Doug's over here getting his giant turbo build done. And you're getting I'm, a new machine. No one knows that. <laughs> I didn't know you were farting. I'm just farting in the wind. Unbelievable. That's really all I'm doing. Uh, just well, yeah, anyway. Just no, we'll just, <laughs> we'll just let them think about it. Uh, we're about to flip this thing over, man. It's a big, uh, big moment. Is that what you said in Indy too? <laughs> Unbelievable. We're about to flip this thing over. Unbelievable. I'm gonna test this new codes out to just <laughs> check this out. Look at me go. <laughs> Is he okay? Is he dead? I think he's fine. <laughs> I was laughing. That's a 120 yeah. wall cage, it baby. It was so funny, man. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, this is cool. I feel like flipping the motor over. As opposed to helping, we'll just let him flip the motor himself. Hey, you're TDC on number one, baby. Oh, look at that. That looks Perfect. beautiful. Yeah, that's the angle there, man. Just a good looking unit. They even make it easy to work on. Yep. Cool, man. Cool, cool. It looks like I put the pistons all in the right direction. That would be good to find out. It's always good to verify. Looking around the bench, I don't see anything appears to be left out that needed to be inside. So there's some pistons and rods over there, but <laughs> yeah, it's for the six-cylinder mod down the road. Oh, good point. Cool. So um, we got head studs up here, so that'll be neat. I got to put the head together. Still, I haven't put the valves back in the head, so that's quite the process. Yeah, um, not too bad. A little bit tedious. Um, got the valves all cleaned up already. I think I lapped them in already as well. So. Nice. Just need to clean stuff up. We got new valve springs. We got new valve seals, so we can put those in. Using stock springs on this? Yeah, stock springs. So, so you're not going to rev it that high, are you? Nope. We're actually going to. Yeah, we're not going to rev it really high. We're going to rev it uh, a little low, actually. Okay. So we'll do that. We'll talk about that later. We get to the cams, but. So previously thought these were lapped. Turns out Doug had a lapped in judgment. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so I cleaned them up, but I haven't lapped them in yet. So lapping them in is just really at this point cleaning the surface, the sealing surface of the valve. You look at them, and there's not really much wear on these. So if you look across the sealing surface, that angle, you get a bunch of wear. You'll see that start to cup. These are nice and flat still, um, but I just want to lap them quick to to clean them off, basically. So I put some lapping compound on the valve on this one already. You can see it's squishing out there a little bit. That's just that stuff. It's gritty. And then uh, we'll just take this little suction cup deal. Little, little lapping tool there, bro. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a cool little maneuver there. Yep, and just give her a little spin. So how long do you lap it? Doesn't take much for what we're doing here. I'm not actually trying to seat the valve or anything. I'm just trying to make sure it's nice and clean. So that's probably honestly good enough already. We'll pull it out and as long as there's a good even mark around it. I wonder if we can see that. Should be able to. We should try to get that on vid. Clean it off a little here. Yeah, you obviously gotta get the compound off. So yeah, see. you see the little gray stripe. Let me see if I can zoom in on this beast and get a little focus. Oh, there you go. I don't know if that's a good angle or not. Yep, just hold it right there and spin it slowly. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you can see that bright. Yeah. Basically, it's working in the sealing surface of the valve to make sure you don't lose compression. Yeah, and it's a good check, too, because you can spin it around and look. This one looks even all the way. If you see that it's not contacting in a spot or it's uneven, then maybe you got a problem you want to pause and figure out. So it's pretty important that these seal. Just lap until you die, bro. So. Maybe not. What's that? Move on to the next one. Yep, so you got to do that a number of times. Approximately 12 times. Very exciting. We're going to do this whole thing. No cut. One take. Yep, and we'll start right now. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, check out those sweet wildcat clutch parts. I wonder what those are for. Unbelievable. So anyway, yeah, Doug's over here just covering everything in, in some fluids. Yeah, this is great. Every time I open the top of this thing and do anything, the entire garage smells like mineral spirits for three weeks. It's a pretty tough unit. <laughs> it's, it's pretty aggressive. Pretty so yeah, there's much. some stuff in the head that we couldn't get out. I say yeah, we, I mean Doug. 
Oh uh, yeah, we're just jumping in, giving her a deep clean, and then we'll go back to the dawn. Just giving her another mineral. Give her a little DC, do a little yeah. deep clean Daniel Cormier, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Doug's on can number four of carb clean. <laughs> you know, sometimes, sometimes you just... That's a new one. Carb clean. You can't put a price on a clean head. What if I accidentally gave you just... <laughs> WD oil it's or just something? just like aerosol glue or something. <laughs> That's a tough break, dude. The stuff that you use to stick your sagging headliner back on your 90 yeah, yeah, Chevy. Yeah, yeah. You know, 3M. Good stuff. I'm gonna fix my Chevy right up, dude. I got this 3M spray. It was $12.99. This is industrial strength, dude. I, for some reason, have a bottle of that. Everybody does. Work, just like, why did I even buy this? Like, why would I even buy this? Everybody has that spray. Useless stuff. They just think they're gonna fix their when old car. Accidentally sprays it. Yeah, then just get the glue everywhere. I think we're pretty good, man. Yeah. Great work. Good enough. All right, so we got the head semi cleaned. I'm taking off the old valve stem seals because we got new ones. Not because they were likely worn out or an issue, but just over the course of all the porting and the cleaning, likely basically ruined them. So just replace them. They're cheap. This is the part of everybody's engine that they think is failing when they actually just have smoked rings on their 98 Tercel. <laughs> yeah, everybody wants it to be the valve stem seals. <laughs> it's just valve stem seals. I know it. As if that's an easy fix. It just never is. No, these pretty much don't go bad. Anyway, that's why we're putting new ones in, because they don't go bad. They didn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> so I've already explained that. They're bad now. Remember last time we did this? I set my phone in the bottom of this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not that cocky anymore about <laughs> waterproof phones. Uh, it was more of a water-resistant phone. Mostly oh, because that phone know. did not work too long after that. Thank anyway. you there, man. That thing looks great. She's like getting, it looked like absolute ass on the bench. Yeah, getting pretty clean. So we'll shoot her out with some compressed air. Pop the uh, the new seals on. Reassemble her. That's right, dude. Why don't you hit that vape for everybody at home watching? <laughs> How about no? <laughs> <laughs> Doug is now christening the valve stem seals. With a tap from the brass rod mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the eight millimeter socket, official valve seating tool. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever the hell it is. Anyway. Uh, very exciting. These just push on the stem. So you can push them on and tap them on. Like Maybe to, we can see what's going on. I like in there. to tap them on. See, it's just a little rubber rubber seal. Goes over that stem. Oh, Another yeah. stem goes through it. Satisfying. I'm waiting for the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> it's time, man. We are working on the last valve. We've got all the intake valves in. We, I mean Doug. And he's got every one of the exhaust valves but the last one. And this last, is the process. The last little digger. Clean it in the soap. A little soapy water, a little clean water. Make sure there's nothing in the groove for the keepers. Yeah, so this isn't a uh, isn't a beautiful process, but um, it's what you got to do. So if you guys have watched the Making the Wildcat Great Again series, you sort of know what we're doing here. But if not, and that's I guess likely not at this point because you didn't have that many subs back then. A while ago, yeah. Yeah, so lube up the stem, put it in the head, turn the head over, and then we'll be using this tool. Where is it? I don't even know where it's at. Somewhere to uh, put the keepers in. And then put the uh, springs yeah, on. Right here, man. Here's our little compressor, so can knock one out quick. Show them how it's done. Ugh, I actually can't because we don't have any of our stuff out. Oh, no. New spring. That goes in there. i got to get the rest of the stuff. So, yeah, you can see the other one. It's got the... Uh, I can't remember the name of things right now because I'm pretty tired. What's that thing on the top called? Retainer. Uh, retainer. Retainer. Uh, keeper so this is your retainer and your valve. Keeper. We'll show you that process in a minute. All right. So here's the deal. Here's the tool. We got this. We got the spring in there. We got the retainer in there, and then this little didgery just compresses the spring. Yeah. So it actually presses on the valve on the other side. So this thing is shaped like a big C, and this uh, this side holds in the valve. This side compresses the spring, and then when the spring's compressed, you can put the little keepers in. Mm -hmm, and you got to mm -hmm. do that with a set of uh, forceps. 
And I just grab these and I put a little grease on it to kind of hold it. Dip her in the grass. Dip her in the grass just a little. It's pretty crazy. That little keeper is keeping the whole thing together when you're ripping 10,000 RPMs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a symphony. It's an orchestra yeah, of parts. Make sure parks. these get in there correctly for sure. So you relieve pressure slowly and then it kind of sucks them back up in place and there's a little spot on the valve stem where they sit into very exciting stuff. It's amazing. That's totally a degree. <laughs> oh. oh, I missed it. Well, there it is. There Boom. It is. Yeah. They're in. Repeat that a bunch of times. Are you going to give it the tap of good luck with the brass? I do, yeah. After I get all these in, I like to go in and just tap the end of the stem a little bit just to make sure the keepers are seated and nothing falls apart. And then uh, that'll be that, man. That head's almost done, brother. A few more to go. Because one. He's like a dream come true. <laughs> Two. Two. Dougie rebuilds motors for who? Himself. <laughs> so he can do wheelies, yeah. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. <laughs> they don't make the sixth scare pay. But hey, he's got a freaking wheelie anyway. Five, Douglas, you're just a champion. <laughs> Wearing a Yamaha shirt, yeah. That's it. <laughs> that was more than enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's how you know. Man, That's Keith Sweat so right good. now. Keith Sweat is, is like, proud of you. I like that, dude. That's anyway. how you know it's time to end. It's like, what is it? It's past it's midnight. midnight. It's at freaking this point. dark out. We've been here day, since what? Five? Yeah. It's been a long day. That's a long time to be behind so, the wheel of a motor. Obviously, more to do, but I think we're going to wrap it up for the night. So, all the valves are in the head. We come back uh, tomorrow or whatever. We got some head studs. We'll put those in, clean this up, put the head on. We'll get into timing the cams, doing the valve clearances and all those things, button up the sides. That's so. a lot of information, so this was uh, more in-depth. If you guys like this, let us know. If you don't, also, don't bother letting us know. I mean, yeah, I understand that this isn't for everybody. You know, right. But every once in a while, I kind of want to just gloss over this stuff. So there will be one more episode coming up with uh, the rest of kind of the heavy tech stuff on the engine. And then from there, things will be uh, speeding up yep. and a reassembly. With a turbo so. attached to it. <laughs> yeah. be real neat stuff. Some yeah. real uh, neat stuff. <laughs> People like this effect, dude. Some real neat stuff. Hey! Anyway, so yeah, yeah thanks Anyways. for watching, guys. Yeah, thanks for being with us again. Always appreciate when you hang out with us. Always appreciate when you watch the videos. Everything you guys do, you know, say this at the end of every video because it's true. You know, this is all because of you guys. So we wouldn't be able to afford to do this build. We wouldn't have the support that we have if it wasn't for your views. Um, you know, donating through Patreon, buying the parts through the parts store, all that stuff is huge in supporting what we do here. So thank you, thank you very much. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. That helps us tremendously as well. And uh, if you are, thanks again. And we'll see you in a couple days for the next episode. I'm looking forward to those couple days. I'm looking forward to this, man. This is really the, what are you doing? the key factor. <laughs>